partnership with Marina Dibucci for Cause Box is going directly towards your Child Advocacy Center of Thailand, yes. which is working yes. on the ground to yeah. help officers investigate um, child traffickers, totally. uh, online crimes against children. Can 100%. you elaborate a little bit more on what that yeah, center yeah, is yeah. doing and how of they're course. operating? Yeah. So it's actually something that's so incredible and I got the opportunity to go actually just last week and visit it personally. So that was wow. amazing. Yeah. So we call it the CAC, so I'll probably refer to it as that, but Child Advocacy Center, CAC. We like abbreviations, yeah. triple R's, whatever. <laughs> um, so basically what it is, we partner with the Royal Thai Police, wow. with TICAC, which is Internet Internet Crimes Against Children. Mm -hmm. And so that's based off of ICAC which is in the U.S., but this is Thai Internet Crimes Against Children. It can kind of be a mouthful, but yeah. yeah. And so then we also partner with FBI and HSI. And so just like you were saying, what we have set up there is it's basically this beautiful house. Beautiful house with like a living room, little kitchen area, a playroom, and then it has this area where all of the, you know, the police, the Royal Thai Police, would come and would do the investigation. So what we saw and what you see oftentimes within human trafficking is you're not working with um, evidence that can be handled just within your hands. Like with drug trafficking, you have evidence that's drugs, or with arms trafficking, you have, you know, a gun or a weapon of some yeah. sorts. But with human trafficking, you have a person, a child, mm -hmm. who can be manipulated who can be controlled, who can just realistically be confused. Yeah, and totally. so basically what we saw is that when there would be raids or operations performed, these children would get taken back to these really scary, if you're a kid, these scary investigation rooms where they're being, you know, funneled with questions on like, what have you experienced X, Y, Z, because the police are just trying to do their job. They're trying to collect evidence so they can bring justice. But it's scary for them. It's scary. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, if you're like, yeah. there's a Royal Thai policeman in his uniform, you're like, I'm scared. Like yeah, I would be course. scared even yes. as an adult. Yeah. And you're in this cold, sterile room. And also with that, you actually have to ask specific questions to get to an answer that can be upheld as evidence in a court of law. So trained social workers have to be used to do that. Yeah, right. So basically we saw that there was this huge disparity and that's how we created the Child Advocacy Center by partnering with these different sectors of the government and FBI and HSI so that individuals who have participated in sex tourism or crimes of human trafficking who may not even be from Thailand can be tried in their country. So if someone from America goes to Thailand, yeah. participates in sex tourism, and then we're able to gather evidence, that evidence can be used in a court of law to try him not only in Thailand, but in the US. Mm -hmm. So we're, cre we're creating a space where we can collect sound evidence that brings justice and actually derails a system. Because right now, human trafficking in a lot of areas is a high profit, low risk crime. Yeah. And so we're trying to flip that on its head. Mm -hmm. And we also, our biggest priority is the survivor. We want a safe place for children to be able yes. to come where they don't yeah. know they're being interviewed. They're just hanging out, they're playing with games, they're eating pizza, they're talking to the social worker and they're just, you know, hanging out. Yeah. And so we have this incredible story of a little girl who we actually saw on the streets for a long time before we were able to get her off the streets, uh, before we opened the Child Advocacy Center. And so she was every night out on the streets dressed in really skimpy like bathing suit s clothing, selling glow sticks and all these things. It's forced begging, which yeah. is a really, really horrible yeah. form of trafficking that happens a lot in Thailand. Um, so these kids, they beg all night long. A lot of them are on drugs. It could be glue, it could be other methamphetamines, anything, um, because they can't perform for that long. They can't stand on a street corner and sell things for that long. And so this abuse that happens in that, it's just horrific. Yeah. And so we're able to get this little girl off the street. We're able to bring her back to our Child Advocacy Center, get her new clothes, get her a shower, get her food, help her play with toys. And then we're able to get evidence from her in a way that's non-obtrusive. And now she mm -hmm. is in an incredible situation and she is performing at the top of her class. She has like little baby kittens oh, and no. is just like so kittens. cute. She's doing gymnastics and yeah. she's doing amazing and is thriving. That's, nice. but that's the power of it. Yeah. It's more than just like, hey, we have this awesome center where the police can come and plan their operations and their raids and we can gather solid evidence. But it's mm -hmm. also like, this is a place where the child can come, get the care they need, then be placed in our care if it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And we can help them to, you know, reintegrate, have their, get their life back, get their childhood back wow. realistically. And so we're involved in all of the raids that the police go on because the police are focused again on justice. That's their job. We want them to be focused yeah. on that, but we're focused on the survivor. Mm -hmm. So even while I was there, 
We were um, walking the streets and one of our social workers got a call from the police saying, hey, we have a case, we need you guys to come. There's a potential uh, victim of human trafficking, about 15 years old, this is where I'm meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So that can happen at any yeah. time. They can get a call in the middle of the night, et cetera, and then they go. So they're the person who's, who's that victim's advocate in the scenario, yeah, looking out for their interests while the police are doing what's yeah. necessary. And so it's really, really powerful. And this is something that can actually change the tides of human trafficking in Thailand because yeah. it's making it high risk. When people can actually be prosecuted for what they're doing, it changes mm -hmm. the game. You're getting the right type of information, but you're also yes. making sure that these victims are feeling comfortable totally. and safe. They and get a cute little teddy bear when they come in and this whole care package so and they're so well taken care yeah. of. And it's, it's just amazing. And you get to see them literally go from being exhausted, scared, etc., to playing. Yeah. You know, they're, they're kids, they're children, yeah. 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 And so it, it's honestly amazing. That's great. I'm just so grateful that A21 are doing this because I've been to mm -hmm. Thailand, I've yeah. seen these little kids on yeah. the road. And I'm like, I remember this was before like, I started my this brand. Like, like, what yeah. you're, like, what can you do? Because you yeah. don't know who they're being controlled by. Totally. I can't just go up and save them. Yeah. So to have A21 to work mm -hmm. with, the law and really yeah. get justice is like, this is why I support A21. Totally. You guys have the power, you know yeah. what you're doing. Totally. You're educated and yeah, 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 yeah. And we partner with law enforcement. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. We're partnering every place that we have an office. We're not doing it on our own. We're not kicking down doors like mm -hmm. I mentioned. We are partnering with law enforcement yes. because yeah. we yeah. want them to still be able to do the work even if let's say for some crazy reason we didn't exist. You know? Because we don't want to be the only reason that human trafficking is being fought in yeah. that country. Yeah. Yeah. We want it to start being led mm -hmm. by the police. Then say, them saying, hey, we are putting together this operation, we received this tip, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so that is super important to us to empower them to do yeah, what they yes. want to do, their job, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And what are some of the biggest challenges yeah. that the center is facing totally. at the moment? Totally. There's a, there's a ton of, ta of challenges. Sure. I would think some of the biggest things are, you know, finding the right people to work on staff. Mm. You know, to be those social workers who are working with the kids, who have the flexibility, the availability, role, yeah. et cetera, yeah. Um, the availability to take a call at 2 a.m., et cetera, all of that. And it's working with the police and really gaining their trust, which it's so cool because now they don't want to do an operation of A21's not there, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. But it's constantly building those relationships with government. You know, sometimes, Sometimes there's tension with like, hey, we think something should be done this way, but the law says this. And so it's just working and, and seeing like, okay, how, how can we use the system as it's intended yeah. mm -hmm. to bring about change? And how can we get the right players in place to bring about change? So a lot of the difficulties there are making sure we have the right pieces in place, making sure we have the right, and that's not only law enforcement, government, other NGOs, but also making sure that we have the right people mm -hmm. on our team. And we have the most incredible mm -hmm. team. Yeah. The most incredible team. Like they will do absolutely anything at any time in the night. I remember one of the girls, she was like, yeah, and then meet us here. We're, we have to take a boat to go over there. Like it's just wild wow. seeing the things that happen, but it's so important because mm -hmm it's lives on the line, yeah, you know? Absolutely. So the challenges are really working within the system, which yeah. the greatest rewards are there as well, but it's hard because we also, prosecutions is a huge thing mm -hmm. and something we're so, so proud of because we know that that's changing mm -hmm. the risk factors yeah. for people to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. And so that for us, we've seen even globally, it's it can be hard because laws are different. Yeah. Laws in the US are different than laws in Thailand than in Greece and in Bulgaria. So figuring yeah. out how to actually try human trafficking case in a court of law in each country, it's a different journey. Yeah. And so we're we're walking that out. And I think it, it's crazy because 40 million slaves in the world, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard for it almost, it's such a big problem to be relatable to, for people to be like, oh, well, that's one person, that's totally. one individual. Yeah. 40 million's a lot, right? Yeah. But it was, I went to an event in London, yeah. for an A A21 event, mm -hmm. and um, I was alone. I, was, I went up to this girl and went, hi, what are you here for, you know? Like, and she was like, oh, well, my sister was trafficked. 
Mm. And that's when it brought it close to mm. home. Like, these are real people. Yeah. And it sounds ridiculous, but 40 million just sounds like such a big number. And totally. Like, what can I do? Totally. But it's actually an individual Visual person. Mm. And one of our biggest taglines that we say all the time in the office is we're for the one, mm -hmm. for the one person. Yeah, we would yes. celebrate one yeah. person just as much as we would celebrate a million people yeah, getting yeah, rescued. That's really good. Because yeah. it's, that's a human life, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And they deserve to live their best life possible. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to do that. And so if we got so focused on 40 million, some people say 27 million, some people say there's so many different numbers out there, but we know that, hey, there are millions of slaves. Yes. And so we're gonna fight for each person until every person is free. And that's our mandate, that's, that's our amazing. mission. Yeah. But it is, it's focus, focusing on that one person. And when you meet someone who's either had that connection or even when I was in Cambodia, I got to meet um, one of our newest survivors. Um, he's super young and he was um, forced to beg and he was abused and he was on drugs, et cetera, et cetera. And now he's in our foster care system mm, and wow. he's thriving with one of our incredible wow. foster care families. Yeah. And it would, it's just amazing because you see him and you're interacting with him. He's very young, probably six, but he looks even younger because he's very thin because for a yeah. while he was very malnourished. Yeah. But he's so happy and he's so joyful. Yeah. But now he's thriving. He's getting to live his life, mm -hmm. you know? And so it really it really does make it for the one when you can see that one and when you hear stories about the one mm -hmm. and you take it from being this massive number and you shrink it down to like, hey, this is a person like you, mm -hmm. like you, like me, who could yeah. be subject to the horrors of this and that's what yeah. we're fighting against. And I know our entire Causebox community yeah. has been really moved by this yeah, partnership yeah, yeah. and have been really moved about the information we've released yeah. thus far on A21. Yeah. So I'd love to kind of tell them and anyone yes. else watching that's really interested what we can do just as individuals mm -hmm. um, to contribute to this mission. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing question. Yes, yes. And there's so many cool ways to get involved. So we have one, which is Walk for Freedom. So we will launch Walk for Freedom registration July 30th. And basically Walk for Freedom is like I said, we have over 450 walks in over 50 countries. And it's everyone standing up on one day, walking in their city, yeah. you know, making, taking a local action to make a global mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. So with Walk for Freedom, we not only walk, but we fundraise. Mm -hmm. And so we fundraise so that we can contribute to the global initiatives, yeah. but we walk in our city to make a local impact showing, yes. hey, we're standing up, we're walking in front of businesses, et cetera, to show mm -hmm. that we're in against this. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so Walk for Freedom is massive, but fundraising is also mm -hmm. huge. Just like the little girl who did the cupcakes. Yes. She was just raising money. You can do anything. If you're yeah. an athlete and let's say you run, you can raise money for your next triathlon, or mm -hmm. let's say you bake, or you make clothes or you want to put on a like a talent night or you're a musician yeah. or something it's really anything like you said whatever's in your hand mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. and so that's massive fundraising walk for freedom we also have sponsor freedom which is my favorite thing and sponsor freedom is our reoccurring giving program where you can actually give each month to the initiatives that we have going on wow. globally. So mm -hmm. you can choose whatever amount that you can give and you know whether it's $5, whether it's $500, it's whatever's in your hand. What we keep mm -hmm. saying like what can you do yeah. in this fight? Mm -hmm. And so that's huge because that allows us to plan for these huge initiatives yeah. that we're doing because yeah. we have these incredible sponsors mm -hmm. who are saying no like I'm going to step in the gap and I'm going to sponsor freedom. Like I'm going yeah. to be the dollar that's there when we need to mm -hmm. have a surgery for someone who has needs to get their teeth redone because of the abuse that they've yeah. Yeah. seen, you know? Yeah. When we need to pay for their education, yes. when we need to do X, Y, and Z. It's so specialized and so specific yes. to each survivor, each person. And so, anyways, those are some main ways that you can get involved, yeah. and it's incredible. We yeah. love all of our supporters, obviously. I do. And I, I, live, I live by that quote, if not me, who? Yeah. That was something that really propelled me to do what I'm doing. Because, totally. And I think a lot of people, they think, oh, well, I'm not, capable to do yeah. this I'm not but everyone has such an individual unique way that they do even if it's yeah. just simply yeah. for example wearing the bracelet that's totally. in the cause yeah. box yeah or speaking to your hairdresser or totally um, educating like themselves about it. yeah, yeah. Exactly. My, one of my, a group of my friends actually had a sleepover and they got everyone to bring like some dollars over and they wow. just had like a sleepover and fight for human trafficking which I think is amazing but I'm definitely big on the walk for freedom. Yeah, there's so many amazing ways. And yeah. if you go to our website, you can see all the different ways, more than even I just listed, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely great.
Um, in closing, Emily, I did want to ask you yeah. if we see something that we think yeah. might be human trafficking, mm -hmm. how would we go about kind of identifying it? And then mm -hmm. are there any procedures we can take to kind yeah. of combat that? Amazing, amazing question. Yeah. Because that's yes. huge. Yeah. Because we all, we have a campaign actually that we released a few years ago called Can You See Me campaign. And it basically is what it sounds like. Can If you saw human trafficking, would you actually see it? Like you might see it, but would you actually recognize it? Yeah. And so we've launched it in Thailand, in the UK. We're launching it in South Africa. We've launched it in Mexico, in the USA. So we actually have those videos yeah. on our website, which are amazing tools to educate on what human trafficking looks like in these specific countries. Because human trafficking looks different everywhere. Absolutely. Human trafficking yeah. is different in the US than it is in Thailand, than it is in Mexico. And so for us to be educated, then we can identify the signs when we see it. And so on that page, we also have like signs and identifiers where people can look for specific things that could be giveaways to the fact that someone could be being trafficked. There are things that you can identify with the human eye and yeah. just body language or you know, a whole slew of things. And so we have those listed out, but we have certain partnerships with hotlines. So in the US, we partner with Polaris and we partner with NICMIC. So NICMIC is hotline for child trafficking in the US. And then Polaris is a hotline for human trafficking, adult trafficking in the US. Mm -hmm. But then in our other countries, we have three hotlines in Greece, Bulgaria, and in South Africa. And those are the national human trafficking hotlines. And hotlines are so important because yeah. it's again, going back to the rescue side of our operational strategy yeah. where Hotlines can actually be that line between slavery and freedom. Mm -hmm. We can get a hotline call from a victim, from a police officer, from a bystander, someone just like you and me, that can be the reason that someone finds freedom. Yeah. And so a lot of people are like, well, what if I call and like it's not actually what I think it is, but yeah. what if you call and it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I always say, err on the side of caution, like there's no, there's nothing wrong with calling and being wrong. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you can call those numbers, you can find them all on our website um, so that you can put them in your phone. I'd say save them to your contacts. Mm -hmm. I had um, one of our coworkers actually the other week, she was in a nail salon and she saw something that she identified as, hey, this could be a potential human trafficking situation. And yeah. so she called the hotline, they sent investigators and we're waiting to hear back what happened, but who knows, it could have been. Yeah. And yeah, so just having those in your phone ready to go, safe and aware you and never know when you yeah. can see it because it's happening, it's hidden, but it's in plain sight. Yeah. So Absolutely. just learning yeah. how to identify it is so important so that you can do something about it. Totally. Well, thank you both Marina and Emily for yeah. sitting down with me and talking more about your amazing initiatives and our partnership. Um, we're so, so, so excited to be contributing to this mission. Mm -hmm. um, thanks all the viewers for watching yeah. and we will see you around. Bye. Bye. <laughs>